How's it going everybody? I recently heard from some hacker buddies of mine over at redlion.io that they were working on this project to help with Puerto Rico disaster relief. As many of you know, and I'm sure you're following, a category five hurricane hit Puerto Rico. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about uh, what was going on and, and what these guys are working on. I'm, I've just come back from the Bay Area and I wanted to at least address what was happening there because, I mean, we, we just had several hurricanes hit the U.S. and, and Puerto Rico is, is, is America, right? It's, it's part of this country. And I think what's happening there is, is something we should talk about. So I just finished this interview with uh, some of the guys over at Red Lion. So take a, take a listen. Wait. Uh, tell us what happened. You guys are saving Puerto Rico or at least contributing well, to the rescue of... We're not saving Puerto Rico. What we're trying to do is help reestablish uh, a communications infrastructure and a power infrastructure for one town. Let, let me start at the beginning. So uh, at DerbyCon recently, uh, Dave Kennedy and Aaron Kennedy and Trusted Sex Conference that they hold in Louisville, Kentucky every year, this was the seventh one. I've been working security at DerbyCon since year one, so I'm kind of a, kind of a legacy there. Is, is this like a, <laughs> it's like a hacker convention? Totally a hacker convention. Uh, about 2,500 people. Uh, we hold it at the Hyatt Regency in downtown Louisville. Beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, one of those hollow core hotels they built 20, 30 years ago, which is a horrible idea because I'm loud. So when, I, you know, when I'm out there yelling, hey, get in line, I get complaints from the 18th floor. So what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so at this hacker convention, uh, we had a couple of gentlemen show up who are friends of ours. And uh, Mike Baker actually was just out in Puerto Rico. He taught a class. Uh, including to both of these gentlemen. Uh, so we knew them intimately and had recent contact with them. Carlos Perez and Jose Quinones Borrero. Um, Jose, if I mangle your name, I'm sorry. Carlos and Jose, their wives told them, no, no, it's okay, it's a hurricane. We always get hurricanes, it's fine, don't worry about it. And so they came to the conference. Carlos came to teach a class, make a few dollars and see, go to a conference where a lot of his friends are. Jose came to the conference to learn, to be around people that he, he cares about and to, to make more contacts in the community. Always useful, okay? Jose runs B-Sides Puerto Rico, so bringing people to his conference is a wonderful thing. It was actually supposed to be about a month from now. It won't be anymore. Uh, anyway, so Carlos shows up in the security room one day. It's, uh, since I don't do security for DerbyCon, I was there. And he asked, does anybody have a couple of radios I can bring home? Uh, what? Huh? What do you mean? He said, I'm flying out on Sunday. I can't order them from Amazon fast enough to get here in time. Obviously, they can't get delivered to the island. And I want a radio so that if my wife has one, I can talk to her and she can tell me if anything's going wrong. He was nervous. Uh, looting is happening on the island and it's, it's oh, getting wow. very scary. Okay? They're having a lot of problems with looting. So he said, hey, does anybody have any radios? Now, we found him a couple. Scott actually had one and there was another gentleman that had one, Mycroft. But uh, I thought we can do better than that. So I went and I approached several of the conferences that were there, like I run B-Sides Delaware, uh, B-Sides Raleigh organizer, Army Trained was there. Um, and uh, DerbyCon obviously were at, so that's easy. Uh, we had uh, ShmooCon, B-Sides DC, uh, NolaCon, HushCon, a lot of the organizers were there at DerbyCon. And I went to them and I said, hey, would you be willing to donate money towards helping out Puerto Rico? And they said, what do you mean? So I explained, we'd like to reestablish a communications infrastructure, at least in the area that these two live. They live in roughly the same town. They're like uh, neighborhoods right next door to each other. Uh, we'd like to reestablish power. We'd like to make it so it's comfortable and feel civilized and the neighbors are looking out for each other. And they, they didn't hesitate. They jumped on it. And I mean, like you wouldn't believe jumped on it. Uh, our, our stretch goal, our stretch goal was $5,000. I had that in 10 minutes. And I mean 10 minutes. Uh, so then we went and got busy. Uh, Joel Pomtag and my wife, Janice Paulson, actually started getting to work on deciding what we we're going to buy. They are logistical experts and they are very detail oriented people. Uh, Joel used to help out with that kind of thing when he worked at SpaceX. So he's done that kind of thing, logistic work for space travel. They don't have extra ports of call. What you get, what you bring with you, it's what you get. So that's kind of the, the mindset he was working from. Okay. Uh, so thank you to SpaceX for that. We appreciate it. Good mindset. Uh, they started working on the logistics. Rick Farina started working on uh, the, the frequencies and how we would program the radios. Uh, everybody worked and everybody did great. Uh, I went to Hackers for Charity. Johnny Long said, give us the money. We'll take it in as a 501c3. It makes it a charitable donation. Awesome. Everybody's taxes has helped. 
Uh, we also have connections with Goal Zero. Goal Zero, they have a, a, a factory sort of refurbished store, and we get a discount on that because we're a charity and they know we help people in Uganda and such. He called Goal Zero. They said, no, 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 you don't want to send refurb gear to a disaster site. We're going to give you the same discount on new gear, and a serious discount it is. Uh, I don't remember how much it was, but Goal Zero just, they went above and beyond. I, I, don't, I, I have to imagine they're losing money on, on the prices they're giving us. They're amazing. Uh, we're buying huge solar panels, not huge, but they're, they're big solar panels. They're 150, 300, 100 watt, and smaller ones, 50, 30, 20, and so on and so forth. What we're doing is we're buying four large arrays. They're going for the police, fire, EMS, and school there in that town, that city. Uh, it's a suburb of, of San Juan, the, the capital of Puerto Rico. Uh, we're buying lots and lots and lots of smaller rigs that are going to be hubs. Basically, every five houses will have one of these hubs. And every five houses, three to five houses, will have a radio, an FRS, GMRS radio, which we got for about $14, 12 to $14 off of Amazon, USB chargeable. Um, we shipped 30 of them back with Jose and Carlos, and we're shipping a pallet of gear, the Goal Zero gear, 60 more radios, uh, a flashlights, lanterns, chargers, battery banks, and I think it's either a DC-3 or DC-8 with Phantom Edge. They're an anti-human trafficking organization. Uh, Dave Cox is a pilot for We met him at DerbyCon, and he's like, we're helping. What can we do? We're like, can you get the stuff there? He went, yep. Uh, All together, the people at DerbyCon, uh, the, the organizations at DerbyCon, the, the conferences, the people, we raised over $20,000 and it's still, wow. there, there's piling on. It's piling on. Um, so we're buying gear to send and we're building a recipe book because not only is that this only one city, one town in Puerto Rico, but there's going to be more disasters. There always are. Look, look at the last 10 years. Well, look at uh, the past month with Harvey, <laughs> Irma, and uh, Maria. And, and Jose, I, I oh, yeah, think yeah. I'm going. I, I mean, there, there's so many areas between uh, between Harvey uh, and Texas, between the the, the Virgin Islands, uh, Puerto Rico. There, there's a heck of a lot of disaster out there that's just not really being well addressed. So Johnny Long said, you know, let's let's coordinate this with ITDRC, uh, the IT Dis- Information Technology Disaster Recovery Center. Uh, they're they're a nonprofit that goes out and helps bring. Uh, uh, in, internet, phone, power, uh, the necessities of life. Let's be honest. Yes, food and water and clothing and shelter, absolutely important. But if you don't know if your family's alive or dead, that's kind of important too. Or advanced if, warning. I mean, you know, when, the, when radio's down, when communications are down, there might be something you need to know about and that could save your life. So information about, technology, you know. And mortgages don't stop when a disaster happens. Some states they do, some states they don't. So you still need to be able to work. If you have no internet, no phone, no power, how do you work? You know, maybe you can shovel mud out of somebody's house, but if you've got a job, you could also lose your job. All right, but what about schools? Because you were, you were so, mentioned- This is really cool. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Hackers for Charity with Sam Kinch has for years been developing this thing called a Rachel. Uh, it's a little box. It's only about, uh, honestly, it's the size of this tablet. Um, so it's, it's, it's a little thicker, uh, about the size of the tablet. And, and what it does is it has a, a wireless access point, okay, a wireless router. It has a battery and a hard drive in it. And what does it have stored on there? It has Wikipedia. It has Khan Academy. It has 20 other databases worth of data. A, a child can take their tablet from their house, their, their Kindle Fire, their, their, their iPad, their whatever, or their laptop if they've got power for it, but tablets are easier to power. And they can log on to this wireless access point. We don't need external internet access. All the data is right there. They can go back to school within days of a disaster happening. Oh, wow. They can have a little island of normality in this ocean of weirdness and, and, and uncertainty and disaster. And so they can go back to the school. That's why we're putting one of the big solar arrays at the school. We want to charge all their tablets. We want to charge all their flashlights. We want to charge all of the things that give children, again, that little island of normality. Let them go back to school within a few days so at least they have structure in their lives. And uh, we're sending over enough radios to have a radio about every three or five houses, three, four, five houses. Everyone will have a radio and a hub, a, a solar power center, a, a battery pack, so they can charge these radios. They can charge people's cell phones. They can charge people's tablets and, and USB batteries so that neighbors can watch out for each other. They can call the police if the phones aren't working and they aren't. They can get on the, 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 the radio, and we're giving at least half a dozen radios to the police, fire and EMS, and they can say, hey, there's a looter over here, uh, and the police, boom, they're over there and they're taking care of it. 
They can work with the police, the fire, and the EMS to take care of their own town. This is self-sufficiency, it's self-reliance, and it brings towns together. And to us, that's huge. I th- I, it's, it's kind of interesting to me because, you know, when we hear about hackers, usually you, you have this picture of, you know, a guy wearing a black hoodie and a mask at his computer trying to destroy the world or take down the government. You know, hackers are bad guys. And here we have you guys talking about how you're trying to rebuild infrastructure and, and create a system to help kids go to school and for, you know, uh, people to, to spot and stop yeah. looters. Right. It's like the opposite of the stereotype. I'll give you one example. At my conference, besides Delaware, we're only about a 500 person conference. We have spawn camp. We have 70 to 100 children show up, you know, sign up. That spawn camp fills up first, okay, for the kids. And they show up and they take computers apart. And the dead computers that we bring in, they take them apart and they, they lay them out in micrometric precision. They learn how to program. They learn how to build things. They, we use snap circuits. They're great for kids. Oh my God, these are awesome toys. They snap. Clothing snaps are metal. They're conductive. So they snap a battery to a switch, to a fan. You flip the switch, they turn the fan on. They understand how electricity works. <laughs> we love teaching. We adore children. We have children at just about every conference now, and, and we're all growing up. I'd imagine <laughs> you, you have children, right? Yeah, exactly. Hackers are people. They have families. So we, we, <laughs> we love teaching, and we love helping people. And look, I mean, our stretch goal was $5,000 for the Puerto Rico operation. Um, we're at over 20,000 and people are yelling at me. They're like, where's the donation page? I can't find it. It's like, okay, okay, chill. Yeah. Yeah. All we, right. So we, it's wonderful. Let me, let, let, I have a question I want to ask, but before I do, I want to make sure we don't miss anything. Is there any other technical, uh, any technology or, or, or any final thoughts on, on that project with Puerto Rico? We, uh, we examined wind power as well, but because of the salt air, we thought it would probably not would not work very well. They'd corrode very fast, so we went oh, with solar. Sure. Much much solid state, much easier to use. Um, that's just a technical note. Uh, we're going with very 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 simple systems. FRS GMRS radios, five watt radios. <clears throat> you don't have to be licensed to use them. They're legal to use. They're simple to use. We're flashing them with a custom code plug so that all the only channels you can reach are the appropriate channels. We're flashing the radios that are going to the police with emergency channels as well that reach farther. Um, we, we're going to make that software available to everybody a very short amount of time. Um, uh, we're just trying to keep it very, very simple. We, we preach disaster recovery to companies at Fortune 1 all the way down. And uh, for once, we get to use our training in a way that, and our knowledge and experience and skills in a way that's really going to make a difference. Yeah, cool. So, 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 so here's the question I had for you that isn't technical. It's political. Are you ready? I don't know. I don't expect you to be answer on this. Why don't Americans know that Puerto Rico is America? Right? There was, there's very little coverage of what's going on there. You have hit on something that bugs the crud out of me. Okay. I've, Puerto Rico is a U.S. protectorate, if I've got the terminology correct. They are U.S. citizens. They and every oh, they don't pay taxes. Bull. They pay over thirty billion dollars a year in taxes. Okay. Oh, wow. I talked to Carlos and Jose, and I said, "Let me ask you a question." And they said, "We pay over thirty billion dollars a year in taxes. Everything that gets imported into the island by law has to go through a U.S. port and pay a U.S. tariff. It's a federal sales tax of six percent. Okay, or a federal import tax, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, anything that gets shipped in pays a six percent tax directly to the federal government." They pay $30 billion a year in taxes directly to the federal government. And this is part of the reason why their infrastructure is so, sh- so, so just in shambles is because that taxes, th- those taxes aren't state taxes. Those are federal taxes. They go I right. See, so that money's going out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So they pay taxes. They are U.S. citizens and we're not doing enough to help them. Why is the USNS Comfort, the United States Naval Service, hospital ship, and, 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 and help ship, whatever the proper terminology is, comfort. Why is it not there? Why are we not doing more? I mean, Texas, you, you can't really reach it from the comfort. We've got units coming into Texas for Harvey, and they need it. God bless them, okay? The Virgin Islands and, and, and Puerto Rico, why are we not helping them more? Well, I read a story that said more than half of Americans don't even know Puerto Rico is America. You are a absolute U.S. citizen. If you get born in Puerto Rico... You are given a U.S. birth certificate, a U.S. passport, a U.S. driver's license. 
the only reason we don't have a 51st star on the flag is because the vote to make them a state hasn't happened yet. You can fly there and back with no passport. Uh, yeah. it like three weeks ago. Yeah. It's America. <laughs> it is 100% an American state in all but name. Yeah. And it would totally screw up the flag. We'd have to readjust, put a star off. It'd be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, it's cool to hear that, uh, you know, you guys are, there's, there's a lot of people who are working to help Puerto Rico and it's, it's cool to hear that, uh, you know, the projects you, you've got, you've got, uh, going technology, technology. information, uh, solar panels, cool stuff. Any, any final thoughts on, on the project or, or what you guys are working on? Yeah. If you want to pick up updates on what's going on, uh, we're definitely updating uh, blog.redlion.io or you can go over to hackersforcharity.org and see updates there as well. Uh, the emergency pack that Josh was describing, we're going to be laying out what it entails and what you need to purchase to put the pack together for people. Effectively, what we're trying to do in Puerto Rico is reboot an entire town based on communications. You know, We feel that if you have communications, if you have a way of moving or getting people moving, getting people talking, the economy is going to reboot itself essentially, you know? So what's the easiest way for us to be able to deal with a disaster like this? Uh, not just this one, but the ones down the road. And this is, this is our contribution. We're not all 400 pounds sitting in our mother's basement. <laughs> that's, but if you are, Hey, that's okay. Especially yep. if you're working to help those uh, in, in yeah. Indeed. Yeah, and a lot of people miss miss the, the the key concept here, and the key concept is reaching out and helping other people. You know, is being selfless in nature and giving your time to make humanity better. A lot of people don't get that. Cool, man. Well, it's uh, cool to talk to you guys and hear what you're working on. I really appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. So, thank you all so much for tuning in and, and listening to what, uh, what these guys had to say. If you want to support their relief efforts, make sure you go to hackersforcharity.com slash donate. The link will be in the description below. Everybody who, who tuned in and listened and is, is paying attention to what's happening in Puerto Rico, thank you all so much for, for being involved. And to all those who, who can donate and, and who do, a uh, sincere thank you for, for supporting the, the people uh, of Puerto Rico and the hackers who are working to help them. You have my gratitude as well as those who are, who are in need, I'm sure. So thank you all so much for, for watching. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. And today, I don't need you to support my work. I need you to go to hackersforcharity.com slash donate and help those in Puerto Rico. And, you know, there, there are other people in this country, in Florida and Texas, who need uh, help as well. So keep them in mind and, you know, donate where you can. I'll see you all tomorrow.